Now let's take the next step in implementation and create a pool. As you can see, here we are on our dashboard. If I go to Pools and MDisk by Pools, you can actually see I have no MDisks to use. If I go to my internal storage, you can see I have all of these candidates ready for me to provision into a pool. So now I can actually see that I have 20 terabytes of tier zero flash. I can see that they're all internal. And now let's actually go to MDisk by pool and I'll create my first pool. So let's give it a name. I'll actually type in FCM. And now let's not forget about this checkbox, which enables data reduction inside the pool. As well as this nice readme, which also goes through some of the capacity as well as performance trade-offs by enabling this wonderful feature. Notice it also changes with the extent size from the four, which starts off the default, to one peta integer bytes. And let's go ahead and commit this change right now. You'll actually see I click on next and you'll actually see the command. And if I do the more details, you'll see the actual COI, including easy tier, and the data reduction being turned on. Next, let's actually close this box and go on to the next step. You'll see that I now have a pool created, but there's no storage. Let's remedy this problem right now. We can go up to our actions menu, and once I'm inside the actions menu, you'll see that I can add storage to this pool. I can either do a custom or I can use the default by just clicking on internal. It'll actually find those original 24 disks that we talked about. It'll actually show you the size total. And I can just click on apply. And then we will start creating those RAID arrays. You'll actually see the CLI right there as it's actually processing the command. When it's done, you'll actually be able to review the commands. And as you can see here, I can show some of the various different values. I can now close the box. And if I go into my particular pool, you'll actually see that it's online. You can see the capacity. If I now go back to internal storage, you'll see that it's now a member versus candidate on all of those disks. And now let's go on to the next step of implementation. In this section, let's take a look at creating and mapping a new volume on the flash system. We are on the overview screen right now. We will navigate to the host screens where we will define a new host. We can select hosts and then select add host. We need to fill in the information about our host. First, its name. Second, the way it's going to attach, either iSCSI, fiber channel SCSI, or fiber channel NVMe. In this case, we're going to choose standard fiber channel SCSI. The host has worldwide ports, and we have to define those ports here. Prior to doing this, the host has to be zoned and configured by cabling it up to a fiber channel switch and setting the zone so that the uh, ports on the storage can see the ports on the host. Once we've done that, when the storage array scans, it'll see those additional new ports. And here they are right here. So we are going to choose those ports. So now we have the beginnings of a definition of a host with two new fiber channel hosts. Optionally, we can check the host type. We'll just use generic, but there are other types depending upon the operating system and the function of the host. Whether or not we're going to give it access to all of our I.O. groups or just a few of the I.O. groups, we'll select all, and whether or not it will be a member of a cluster. And then we click Add. We see the command right here, the SVC task, that's defining the new host, its fiber channel ports, and the I.O. groups it's a member of. We also see its protocol, its name, and its type. That task is complete. Here we have our new host. And we see that it has two ports. It's a host type of generic, 
but it has no host mappings. So now we're going to define a new volume. If we click on volumes and it brings us to the volume page. We already, we see here, we already have a few volumes defined, but if we want to create a new volume, we can click on the create volumes action button. We have to select the pool it's going to be a member of, and we can check to see if we have enough capacity. We only have one pool on the system, and there appears to be enough capacity to define some new volumes. We now have to define the details of that volume. The number of volumes you want to define, well, let's select two. The size of those volumes, we'll select 50 gigabytes, and the name of those volumes. Test vol and whether or not we want to do any capacity savings. Our choices are whether or not there's no capacity, fully allocated, compressed, and if we select compressed, we also have the option of selecting deduplicated. In this case, let's just select compressed. That'll be a standard compressed volume. Now we have a choice of just creating that volume or create in map. So for expedience sake, we can choose create and map. The volumes get created and we can see the command here that are being used to create the volumes, the first volume and the second volume, test volume zero, test volume one. And then when we select continue, it's gonna ask us, do we wanna map, map these volumes to the host? So we'll go ahead and select our new host, which currently has no host mappings. And we're going to map these two new volumes to this host that we've just previously defined. We can also let the system automatically assign the SCSI LUN IDs, or we can choose those ourselves. Let's let it default for this case. We select Nest, and we can see what it's going to do. It's going to map those two new volumes, test volume zero and test volume one, with SCSI ID zero and one, and it's a new mapping. We select map volumes, and the task is complete. We can also see the command that was run, which was to do a disk host map. It selects the host number, the SCSI ID, and the LUN number. It does that again for the second volume, and now we have a host map mapping. We can see that our two new volumes right here have been created. Their sizes are 50 gigabytes, they're compressed volumes, and they have host mappings. If we navigate over to the host selection field, we see our host, and it shows that it has host mappings. We can right click and look at the properties. We can look at the volume mappings, and we can see here, these are the two volumes that have been mapped. So that is a simple discussion on how to go ahead and create a host, define a host, define its worldwide name ports, and then go ahead defining volumes and mapping those volumes to the host. Thank you. Please feel free to reach out to the Worldwide Storage Engineering team, Joshua Boomert and Andrew Greenfield, if you have any more questions.